Welcome back to the Ozarks today. And joining us now is Dr. Chris Sampson. He is a emergency medicine doctor at the MU Healthcare Center, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about uh, some some toys. Well, I guess some people would call them toys; others may not. But Dr. Sampson, this time of year, we always like to, like to take a look at some of those dangerous toys that are out there, and, and sometimes it's amusing what makes the list, and sometimes befuddling what does not make the list. And you and I, growing up, had uh, certainly a bevy of toys that uh, would probably not be allowed today. And one of the things we want to talk about today are certain types uh, of guns, and I guess it relates to uh, a new study that talks that basically says, you know, the Christmas uh, the Christmas story line, uh, you know, shoot your eye out, is not necessarily just a line from a movie. It seems like that's becoming a little bit of reality. No, yeah, you're correct. I mean, yeah, we always think about that funny line from Christmas Story, but this uh, study that actually came out of one of the children's hospitals in Columbus, Ohio, uh, they went back and looked at the an injury database. Uh, to see about injuries from uh, projectile weapons like BB guns and paintball guns and airsoft rifles. And they actually found some uh, pretty interesting facts uh, when they did this study. So are people actually shooting their eyes out? So, yeah, they are, which is uh, (laughs) unfortunate. Um, But they kind of looked over a 26-year period, so pretty long. They looked back all the way back to 1990, and they actually found that, that these uh, injuries overall had reduced from these type of uh, guns, but unfortunately they found that eye injuries had increased. So there actually was a decrease of almost 50%, but eye injuries over this time period increased 30%, um, and a lot of them being uh, abrasions, uh, sometimes we call hyphema where you get bleeding within the eye, uh, some even severe as a globe rupture. That's when the eye itself actually uh, gets is uh, there's a, an opening in it that causes the contents to leak out and can lead to a total loss of vision. Couldn't one make the argument that our kids are just becoming better shots? Uh, <laughs> shooting in the eye? I don't know. I think probably a lot of it is people just don't realize how dangerous uh, those weapons are. I mean, people, we know to be careful around regular firearms, but I think the big thing is that these uh Air guns, BB guns, or paintball or airsoft guns can be just as dangerous, especially when it comes to being around the eye. I think a lot of this is a discussion that can circle all the way around to responsibility not only by the parents but by the person using the toy and education as well, not just giving it to your toy as though it's a Nerf ball and telling them everything's going to be all right, but actually you know, continuing some of that firearm education that we see a lot of parents do and continuing to have that conversation when it comes to weapons like these, like airsoft and pellet guns and, and paint guns, etc. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think uh, it's it's a combination of things. One is, yeah appropriate handling of any type of firearm if you are using it, uh, proper supervision from the parents, and then lastly, also using protective eyewear if you're shooting these weapons. You know, I just saw a commercial, two commercials recently for uh, two new toys that I'm stunned are even on the market to begin with, and, and I'm sure will probably be raising up or maybe taken off soon. One of them is a new Nerf product, which is uh, a gun similar to laser tag, where you have to shoot your your uh, your opponent in the chest on a target, but rather than being a laser, it is actually firing a projectile. That one raises probably 13 different red flags, and, and that will probably fall on this list soon. And the other one is very similar. Uh, it's it's a weapon that combines a roll of toilet paper with a, a water reservoir, uh, and actually uh, creates spitballs with uh, with the toilet paper and shoots those out uh, of the gun at the other end. That's something I'm sure teachers will love, but also parents should keep an eye out for as well. Yeah, I, actually, I saw that toilet paper one as well. I mean, I think again, the big thing is if they are purchasing these items uh, for their children, is just to make sure they're wearing eye protection if they are shooting them at each other. And I think one of the takeaways from this as well is not to gloss over the types of injuries you're talking about, especially in and around the eye. These are things that could cost someone their vision, and could they have more serious ramifications as well? Yeah, I mean, especially with issues like globe rupture or uh, foreign body in the eye, I mean, those cases, potentially, that could be a loss of vision for the rest of their lives. So, I mean, these are pretty young children. I mean, they saw about half of the injuries... Uh, when they looked at this study, occurred in kids in the 6 to 12 age group, and then the other largest group was in the teenager group. So it would be pretty devastating for a child as young as 6 to lose vision in an eye completely for the rest of their life. You know, in the movie, Ralphie gets shot uh, on a ricochet, kind of shoots himself in the eye. I, I don't know if the study breaks down the way these injuries occurred, but uh, is that also a realistic possibility? Or I'm sure the majority of these injuries are probably coming from someone shooting at another individual. 
So I don't think they really delved into how the injuries occurred, other than just the locations and and uh, what type of injury they were. But I think, yeah, anytime you're even firing at a target, uh, it, even people think it's safe because it's an air gun and not a, a regular firearm. But, yeah, there's always a danger, especially if you're shooting against metal or steel or something like that, that it's going to ricochet back and could potentially hit you in the eye. Do you have time to share with us maybe some of the other uh, types of injuries that you have treated or, or know of that people have treated that can result from some of the toys that maybe are out there on the Christmas market? Um, I think probably the other biggest danger is, is for small children is given a toy that's not really appropriate for their age, and then there's always the chance that they would swallow it, uh, or worst case scenario, it also gets caught in their airway. Or sometimes we even see things get shoved up in the nose or the ear, it's fascinating to me some of the things that are found in the body's orifices, and you're amazed at how something can get into those little crevices and, and get completely buried and, and lost, in some cases, for several days or even longer. Oh, for sure, and some of them can be even pretty challenging. Uh, the company that makes Orbeez, those little, you know, they're kind of those little plastic balls that if you add water to, they enlarge in size. Uh, I guess they've had enough issues where people have put them in their nose or ear, and then they can and get really big and, and block up the area, that they actually have advice on their website for physicians or healthcare professionals on how to get them out. Wow. You know, it, it's always amazing. Those, those warning labels that come on products, it's kind of a cliche saying, but uh, it's partially true. You know those things exist because somebody has done that at some point in time. Yeah, exactly. So when you're dealing with these types of injuries, and let's circle back to the eye injuries again, specifically related to these types of gun, uh, projectile toys uh, or weapons that you're talking about here, depending on the nature of the injury, uh, how soon does someone have to seek treatment in order to to get completely cured? Are, are there some injuries that could cause more damage if they are left untreated and not taken seriously? Oh, for certain. I mean, anything, even the most common injury that was found with, with this, uh, study was corneal abrasions, which is simply a scratch on the cornea, but those are pretty painful. Um, the good thing is that the cornea does heal up pretty quickly, and, and it often is better in a matter of days, but often they still at least do need some type of topical antibiotic, like an eye drop that we have to put in. Um, the other injuries, such as like hyphema, bleeding inside the eye, or a globe rupture when the eye actually has an opening uh, to the outside, uh, some of those are actually surgical emergencies. Globe ruptures need to go to the operating room. So, I mean, the best advice is if there's any type of eye injury and there's concern for it being serious is to uh, go to the emergency department and often somewhere where you may have specialists. I mean, we at MU Healthcare, we have ophthalmologists that are always on call that are able to examine both adult and pediatric patients. As a medical professional, when you see some of these commercials for products, do you just cringe knowing that you're going to see the end result in the ER at some point in time? Yeah, sometimes there are. You look at that and you say, well, that's eventually going to be a patient I'm going to be treating. <laughs> and of course, that's why we're thankful you guys are there, because quite frankly, some of us just can't think for ourselves, it seems, when it comes to using some of these products. And as we said earlier, at the end of the day, a lot of it really boils down to just common sense. But maybe that's an unfair attribution to require of a kid uh, ages you know, four to seven or something of that nature. Yeah, I think it is. I think it's just making sure, again, that they have the appropriate toys for their age group, and then if, also that they're being supervised by uh, appropriate level people. All right, Dr. Chris Sampson, before I let you go, uh, any last words or tips for uh, for safety heading into the, the remainder of the holiday season for parents and children alike? No, I think for parents, uh, just as to, in general, people to just be careful. Because we often see people falling. That's probably another common holiday injury, just because people are up on ladders trying to hang lights and, tree, and decorate trees. So I think just always just a uh, Maybe take a second to think, am I doing something that's safe, and uh, should I be doing it a different way? Okay, I lied. One more question for you uh, about yeah. things that can potentially cause problems or injuries. There was a fad not too long ago that gained uh, that gained popularity and notoriety, and that was with people consuming Tide Pods. Obviously, you want to read the warning labels and be aware of what you're putting into your mouth, and you mentioned choking and swallowing earlier as well. But uh, are there products out there that, uh, because of their color, their shape, their, you know, their... Uh, maybe their uh, actual, just kind of the touch and feel of them. Are there products that uh, kids are more prone to put into their mouth or swallow that could cause problems? Things like Play-Doh and that come to mind, but I believe Play-Doh is non-toxic. But are there some things out there that uh, are for some reason attractive that the kids might be more willing to put in their mouth and parents should watch out for? 
I um, mean, yeah, I think anything that's brightly colored or mimics the appearance of a toy, I think that was one of the problem with Tide Pods and really small children was if they get kind of got into it and if it was in a low area where an infant or a small child could open a counter or, or a cabinet, um, yeah, that color can be pretty attractive because, I mean, most things brightly colored, they're going to be drawn to that. Uh, so anything like that is uh, always a danger. I mean, kids, it's amazing what little kids can get into, so I think that people always forget that and how even though they're pretty small, how smart they can be. So it's always a good idea to keep any type of chemical or cleaning solution just up in a higher cabinet and away from where little hands can get to. Dr. Chris Sampson, I hope you make it through the holiday season without having to deal with any of these types of injuries. Thank you for your time and the advice, sir. Oh, you're welcome.